Hi, the black one. How are you? That's a beautiful sight. Loads and loads of alfalfa bales. <laughs> Chickens are out happy in the rain. And the horses are finally here. We have the fence done and everything else. So I forgot to bring the hot box for uh, the hot wires on the electric fence, but needless to say, the horses are here. They don't know what to think. They're like thinking that every time we go out there to try to pet them, that we're going to try to catch them and take them back to their lot where they didn't have fresh grass to eat. And that's not the case. In fact, we have neighbor's property that we can rotate uh, the horses out to graze because we do have nine horses here. That's a lot for probably a little over an acre to graze on. Um, but there's the baby. Her color is changing. She was blue roan when she's born. Now she's looking more like her mom, but she could be going through that awkward baby phase. Yeah, uh, the alfalfa is going to help them put some more weight back on, especially Pony, the mommy, after she had the baby. Uh, she's about ready to wean her off, though. She's been kicking her off. Hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. You having fun? You like all the grass? Hmm? You pretty girl? Oh, yeah. Is that nice? Is that nice, Misty? You pretty girl, aren't you? Yeah. My horse, Mary, the red one, with her man, the blue roan stallion, Tennessee Walker. <laughs> She's in love with them. Look how sweet that baby is, though. <laughs> Cute little fart. All right, everybody, so welcome back to the channel. As you can see, it's raining outside. It's humid, and my hair is frizzy. It is what it is. So today I'm going to talk about a tragedy that happened to one of our baby horses. If you remember from past of me introducing the horses to you, we had a yearling named Sterling and we called her baby. Um, when we started getting this certain type of hay, she started dropping weight and then became sicker and sicker and sicker and eventually died. Um, upon further investigation, us Yankees just moved down to Kentucky not too long ago. My brother-in-law and sister have been here for about three years. I just came here in January. Um, we've never heard of fescue hay. Um, we didn't have that where we're from. Uh, so this was all new for us. They were told it was fescue hay, so we looked it up. Um, there's been studies with cattle, and not so much as horses, but... Um, I did make some notes about the horses, but I will, I will tell you what it said about the cattle, that sometimes it causes like weight loss, like they're not gaining weight good either, or you know, just other things in that matter. And um, I think it's not as common in horses, because from what I've read about horses, you know, they haven't done the studies like they have with the cows, however, they're pretty horses and cows are pretty similar in a lot of ways um, or can be at least with their systems and whatnot so we noticed after we got big round bales of, of fescue hay uh, she, this started happening um, she was a really sweet sweet baby she loved to come up to people and get her scratchies and just have attention and she's dearly going to be missed <clears throat> and if you also don't know the elderly lady horse grandma she um, was about 30 years old and she we had to put her down she just we didn't want to see her suffer she just she couldn't keep weight on and she was starting to like have convulsions and stuff on the ground and you could tell she was writhing in pain it had to be done so rest in peace to those two beautiful girls will always have a special place in my heart so anyway the not fescue grass itself is bad but there's a fungus that grows on it um, and not all fescue grass is infected so you just have to be very 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 careful I guess you're rolling the dice every time you get fescue grass um, <clears throat> but it's infected with and endophyte neo Typhodium 
Coendophallum. I'll write that down here so you can see what that's called. Some big scientific word for fungus on fescue grass that you cannot see with your eyes. And it produces chemicals toxic to horses and cows alike. The toxic chemical content may be higher after nitrogen fertilization and lower during heavy grazing. Now, I did read on how to maintain the toxicity levels of fescue grass, and it did suggest keeping your grass mowed down. Um, obviously, our grass, we let grow a little bit because we were planning on the horses coming out here. We wanted to have them something to eat versus having to find hay because finding quality hay around here is just it's not worth the price it, it, it's just not we'd rather spend our money on alfalfa bales or alfalfa cubes if we if we don't have any available alfalfa is very very good for a horse it's going to help keep their weight on their nutrition levels up and everything else um, so that's not the way we wanted to go Plus, the horses are happier doing their natural thing being out grazing anyway. It's just way better for a horse if you have that option. Um, but signs of poisoning in a horse, from what the studies have shown, it messes with a mare's hormones, it seems like. Um, because there's reproductive loss, reduced conception rates, prolonged gestation, and that baby out there... It did take longer to, to um, be born than her previous pregnancies, than ponies. Um, weak foals, luckily she wasn't weak. Stillbirths, abortions, which means your horse is just going to lose the baby. Um, thickened placentas and lack of milk production. Um, so those are things to be concerned about. We do have some fescue out in the yard and um, you could tell because it's taller lighter in color and really slender um, it's a, not a very high volume that's out there and we do plan on keeping it short uh, I haven't been out to the five acre lot yet to see what's out there um, it does get bush talk pretty regularly and I, we talked to the man, the gentleman that owns the place, and he says he doesn't like bush hogging it, so he's actually excited about having the horses out there. Uh, so that's a good thing. But if it continues to be a problem, I'm, we're going to have to look into something different because we do plan on breeding and raising horses for sale and maybe getting into breeding gated mules and Zorses, which is a zebra horse mix and just things of that nature we just we just love horses and think that they're neat and we enjoy the hands-on with them and it's like having a dog but different <laughs> plus gas prices keep going the way they are we're going to be needing to ride horses right so um yeah and those poor girls i'm just hoping it doesn't happen to any other horses while trying to be self-sufficient on feeding the horses ourselves as much as possible obviously we're not growing alfalfa yet maybe one day <laughs> uh, and we're just hoping the best for the horses and our relationship with them uh, and for our breeding goals so I will catch up with you I found my complete apocrypha I'll be reading out of that um, also showing you some garden stuff and all that but it's raining today, so don't know how much of the outside stuff's going to happen. And I got housely duties today. So those videos will come soon. And I got another secret to tell you. I love you and so does Jesus. God bless.